Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 1. So, this series is going to be fantastic for you people who want to make an open world city game in the style of Grand Theft Auto. We'll have everything you expect to see and hear from Grand Theft Auto and we'll be designing it from beginners to being an advanced user by the end of the series. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with every episode of this series and everything else on the channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So. This series, as I say, is aimed for absolute beginners. So, you're an absolute beginner, you've just got Unity, you're not sure what to do, perfect for you. Even if you are maybe an advanced user, you still want to know how we're going to do this. This series is going to be great to learn from. So, you've downloaded Unity, you have this. One thing I need to make sure of here is when you have this download component window, you need to make sure that you tick for all the devices that you intend to build your game for. So, for example, I have the Android and iOS build support ticked here. It's up to you if you want that, but by default it will install for Windows uh, and Mac, PC, you know, that kind of thing. So don't worry about trying to find that in that list. So you go all the way through, you will get Unity all installed, and then you'll be presented with something a little bit like this. And at this point, all you would need to do is just name your project. So in this case, let's put GTA Clone whatever you want to call it. Template is going to be 3D because we're doing this entire game in a big 3D environment. And location is going to be where you would want to save it. Don't worry about anything else just for now because we'll probably modify them at a later date. But at this point, you would just click on Create Project. Unity will disappear for a couple of seconds and then reappear once it's created itself and you'll have something which looks a little bit like this. So if there is anything you want to see in this series, please, please leave a comment in any of the videos and we'll see what we can do. So we'll be taking inspiration from every Grand Theft Auto that I can think of, ranging from, well, the modern GTA 5 going back maybe to San Andreas, maybe taking a little something from GTA 3 and we'll see what we can come up with. Now, one thing people ask me in the very early episodes of each series is what it will look like as we go through development. Now, I must point out that I had built a reasonably good working version of this before I started this tutorial, and I felt I would share a couple of screen captures with you guys before we begin. So, just going through a couple of things here, you can expect that your game will look at least a little something like this, all these images here, and depending on what assets that you use personally, because I've already chosen some which I quite like to use throughout this series, and you'll basically work up to what you're building. But as you can see, this is the kind of look that we're initially going to aim for going through this series. So there we go. As I say, everything that we do, you would expect to see in Grand Theft Auto. If you want to see anything, please speak up in the comments. So up until this point, if you have little or very small knowledge of Unity, then please don't worry. We're going to guide you all the way through this. Maybe you just want to see how we'd make a GTA game and, you know, that's fine as well. So let's take a look at the Unity interface to begin with for all you absolute beginners out there. Now, we have a couple of things here straight up. This here is the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a great place to store all your assets, which are visible in the scene in text form. And you can see these two windows here, the scene view being where we build our game, the hierarchy being where we can contain uh, our actual objects. And you can see if we click them, they get selected in the scene. Great, they're highlighted. And you can see these arrows here, the X, the Y, and the Z axis. And these allow us to move things around in the scene view, as we can see. If you make a mistake at any point, you can hold Control, press Z, and it will reset what you've done. Now next to the scene view we have a little tab called game with a little Pac-Man logo next to it. If you click it now you will see this which just looks like a horizon with a grey and blue scene. There's not a lot to see. What this game view actually is is this main camera rendering and if we go back to scene view you'll see a little camera preview of what the camera is seeing in the scene. It's not a lot really, not right now. We also have the asset store, which we're not going to use at this point in the series, but we will be exploring that at a later date. Now, over here, we have the inspector panel. 
and the inspector panel is where we store all important information for all of our objects which are in the scene. Not necessarily all of them either because we could contain information here for an object which will never be visible in the scene. It could be just a game object that has no physical attribute to it but has something here. These are called components and we can add or remove them or disable them as we go along. For example, we have here the camera selected. We can see the transform component stating its position, its rotation and its scale. Something like a camera and its scale won't really matter too much. The scale is how big or how small it is. By default, everything is pretty much one by one by one on the X, Y, Z axis. Rotation represents how much it can turn around. So for example, if we were to take the X rotation here, we can hover our mouse over the X and we can slide this around and change the number. And you can see on our camera preview what impact that's having on the camera. We can also manually type it in, so 20 or minus 50. Again, if you make a mistake, hold control, press Z to undo, back to your original state. Position is representative of its location within the scene view. Center scene is always 0, 0, 0, right there. So we have to remember that if we go backwards, we go into a negative. If we go forwards, we go into a positive. And we can go quite a way negative, quite a way positive. You know, it's, there's no restriction, at least not for now. Again, the components, all the little bits and bobs that you can fiddle around with, play around with, uh, change, modify, everything you'll find here in the inspector panel. Down below here, we have the project window. And this project window is where we store all of our assets. Now, assets in game development are classed as things like music, things like models, things like scripts, textures, anything which you can bring into Unity is classed as an asset. We can then take those assets and either import them directly into our scene or manipulate and then import into our scene. A good example of that will be something we'll go through in the next episode of when we deal with textures. So console is the next tab along and this one here is where it displays any errors or warnings. For example, if we've written a script, we've misspelled something in our script, it will give us an error here and it will tell us where that problem is within our script. It's actually very, very handy and it will come in extremely useful when we do start our C-sharp coding. So next one along here is animation. Now, by default, you may not have this animation tab. To access this animation tab, you need to go over here to the little drop down menu, click, click on add tab, and then click on animation. You'll have this appear. There's not a lot to see here right now, but it's something that we will deal with at a later date. So one final thing to note here, we can move these windows around into a more convenient layout if you wish. For example, let's take this animation tab, and if we hold down the left mouse button, we can take this tab out and place it. For example, here, we could place it here, and we can even keep it as a free box itself, like that. To actually put it back, we just take it and drag it back down here. And you can also move things around, get things into your, you know, your own personal comfortable zone. For example, you could take your hierarchy and have it over here on the right and just have your game and scene view here on their own. If you have a problem at any point, you can go to window, you can go to layouts and then you can revert to one of the save ones or save your actual layout if you want or then go to the factory settings which is the default settings that I have. I'm going to stick with the default for now. So next thing we'll take a look at is something called build settings. If we click on file and if we go down here to build settings we can determine here which platform we want to initially dedicate our build to. So for example, I'm initially going to develop this for PC. So I have the little Unity icon here that determines that I am going for this. Even if we click this, Android, Xbox One, PS4, whatever, it will still stay here until we switch platform. So if we click on iOS and click on switch platform, then you would then be developing for iOS. That doesn't have any you know, meaning within the engine itself. It's only when we come to building and running the game where you would be a little bit different than a PC. But for now, I think it's best if we all stick with PC. 
we can probably look at porting to mobile devices later on in the series. It's also worth noting, if you want to build for something like PS4, then you have to make sure that you get the license. Now, the free version of Unity, which is the one I'm using right here, because everything I produce in my channel can be done for free. You do need a license, so you're not able to publish on PS4 unless you have that license. Xbox One, you would need to download the module, and you can. it's nicely convenient to link there, so that's fine. So as we move along, it's worth noting that anything, absolutely anything you build in Unity can be ported to any supported platform within Unity. So Unity itself, let's talk a little bit about what it is, how it works. It's object oriented or oriented, I should say. But that isn't to say there is not just as much coding, because there is. Coding is vital in any game. But you'll explain that, you know, to anyone, or you know, if I say, well, what's Unity all about? Is it mainly coding? Is it mainly objects? I would say it's visually objective. However, there is coding, and I do think they mesh quite well. So, objects in Unity, they are fairly easy to deal with. We can literally go to Game Object, go to 3D Object, and go to Cube. And we literally have a cube in our scene, as you would expect, you know, duh. So this cube itself, let's have a play around with some convenient settings within this scene now. If we hold our right mouse button, we can move around with a mouse. You'll see that's dictated by the little eye icon, and we can pivot and look around where we are. If we left click, we select whatever we have. If we just click randomly into the open space, we deselect everything. If we click on the cube, you'll see it's highlighted by the orange outline. And also we can zoom in with the mouse wheel. Nice and easy. Perfect. And if we hold the mouse wheel in, we can actually pan around with the hand, which allows us to move our position that we pivot on. So we can move ourselves over here, hold the right mouse button, and turn this way to look at the cube from a different angle. Now remember I was talking over here about the transform, we have the scale, well let's make this cube a little bit bigger to see how that reacts. So let's hit 2 by 2 by 2. So we've increased the cube size fourfold because the original cube was only 1 by 1 by 1 which would fit in a quarter of this larger cube. So now because we've increased the size, theoretically Eight cubes could fit in this size. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've increased its size two by two by two. And again, it's up to you how you want to do that. So let's take a look at rotation now. We can rotate on any angle. And what I've done here is I have held my left mouse button over the letter Y and I'm dragging it around to see how that looks. So we can tumble it and we can swirl it around there. So that's how rotation works. And position, yep, yet again, we can move it up and down, no problem. So the same principle applies. We can select the arrow, hold the left mouse button over the arrow, and move it around. So this is how everything works with the objects. And there's plenty of objects to use, but not necessarily all in the same way. A good example of that is if we go to Game Object, go to 3D Object, and go to Sphere. Now this sphere is going to behave the exact same way as the cube in almost every aspect. There is one subtle difference. This thing called Sphere Collider. Now each object that we can't cross through in Unity has something called a collider. You'll see the cube has that box collider. That means that if we were to apply a box collider to this sphere, you would see a box outlined. So let's put that into practice. If we click on add component, and we can actually type in here what we're looking for, and that's the convenience of Unity. So collider, and here we can select box collider, and you'll see a cube shape is now surrounding that sphere. Now that's not necessarily a good thing, but depending on what the object is, it is a good thing. So I think Collider, well, colliders is something we're going to get into when we delve into physics within Unity. But generally, we like to try and have the object either surrounded by its correct shape, in this case, the sphere collider, or at least something relatively close. You have to be careful with some colliders. If you have an object with a lot of tries, 
by that I mean it has, for example, a lot of sides, a lot of points, you know, it's a very complicated shape, then having something like a mesh collider may not actually be the best option because what a mesh collider will do is cover the entire object, each side of it, with a collider. And like I say, that's not necessarily a good thing. So let's actually try and build a quick little scene now. So I'm going to take away that sphere. I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to reset everything here. So we can literally go zero, tab, zero, 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 all the way across. So now that's back in the middle of the scene at its original size. So what we could do is use this for now as the ground. We are going to use a different type of ground later on. However, I think it's best for now that we can manipulate this object to be the ground. So let's increase the scale on the X and the Z because we want it long ways and length ways. So let's change this to 10 by 10. And one more thing we're gonna take a quick look at is this thing I've not really spoke about yet. It looks like a little sunshine. This is our light. Now a directional light is very handy in scenes because it illuminates the entire scene depending on how the rotation is set. For example, if we were to take the rotation of 50 and change it, you will see the light in the scene changes. And as we keep rotating it round, it changes yet again. The light is very handy, but there are different types of lights that we could theoretically change this to. If we select this drop down menu, we could change it to point. And what point is, it illuminates a se section of our scene. And if we scroll out, like so, we can see this is the se selection or section that it illuminates, the yellow circle. And this can be changed in the range. So we could have one, two, three, and you can see it increasing in size as we change. Like I say, by default, it is 10. And we can see that light is having a very slight impact on this object below. So we could also have spotlight, I guess, if we click on there you'll see how that works. By default, it looks like it's shining that way. So now let's change the rotation back to zero, zero, and let's make this spotlight shine down on our scene. So we can take the X rotation, because you can see we want to rotate on this angle here, and we rotate it downwards. And you can see that spotlight just appearing there. Lighting is essential in pretty much any game in Unity. We could change our spot angle, see how much it affects our scene. We could change it to a complete 180, which gives us the entire scene flowing outwards, or we could have it a pinpoint at six. So I'm gonna change it back to point light and leave that as it is, because it's something that we'll deal with. As I say, lighting is crucial to any good looking game in Unity, and it's getting it just right, but there's different things that you can add to it as well, which we will be doing as we go along. And as I said earlier in this tutorial, when we do our coding, it will all be in C Sharp because I feel that is the best language for us to deal with to create this GTA style game. There is so much more we could do, so much more we can play around with, for example, Java, but I think at this point, at this stage in Unity's life cycle, it's not a good idea. So we will stick with C Sharp. So guys, next episode, we're gonna take a deep look into textures We'll take a look at materials and how we can manipulate those materials to reflect the textures that we've imported. And we'll also look at importing as well because we can't do anything if we don't import the textures we need. So as I say, you get to grips with Unity now. You take a look around. If you are new to Unity, please, please, if you're stuck on anything, please don't hesitate to leave a comment, question, anything. The community that I have on this channel is absolutely fantastic and there's always somebody around to help, whether it's me or whether it's a dedicated uh, member. So guys, we'll leave that episode here for now. The next episode will be out very soon because I, I, I think it's going to be a quite a popular series. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I really am. So if there's anything you want to see, as I say, leave a comment below. And guys, I will see you in that next episode. Thank you very much for watching.